And most of you may already know Don Eystone. She's a full-time faculty person at the City College of San Francisco. Uh, she's been working with At One for at least five years that I know of, uh, and she is all things audio and video to us. She formerly worked at Apple, um, and she is, uh, like I say, an expert in the audio video field and has taught podcasting and vodcasting for At One and does that for uh, City College of San Francisco as well as Lake Tahoe Community College. And I don't know if there's any others. I know she's also uh, a person who has been uh, one of the leaders in the CCC Confer area, a team um, or a meet uh, a scholar. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Donna and, and try and learn something about visual thinking. Great. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, I, I am from the City College of San Francisco, and I'm coming, from, uh, I'm coming at you today from my home in Alameda. And I have some um, still imaging applications that I wanted to, to show you about. I just wanted to get a sense, how many of you um, were in any of the pre prior visual thinking series of desktop seminars? You can just give a green check if you were in one of the visual thinking workshops from earlier. Good, a couple of you were. Thanks. Um, so in the, in the earlier sessions, if you weren't at those, um, there was a, uh, several other people were talking about how, the hows and whys to use images in your courses. And one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today was to give you a um, sense of some tools and why you might choose one tool over another. Um, and give you some tips on, on how to make your images work in whatever format you need. And so what I'd like to have you answer, and you can either do this um, using the writing right on top of this um, slide. And so you'll notice that there's some um, whiteboard tools um, just to the left of the slides. You can, um, you can click on the little A and start typing there, or just type in the chat room some of the um, some of the challenges that you've had or you'd like to have questions answered on today. Yeah, finding the right image. OK, I will talk a little bit about that, too. OK, whether the images are copyright free, so whether you can actually use them or not. I have a good story about that, too, which I'll share later when we get to this topic. Do, OK, uh, figure out how to resize them adequately and, and knowing sort of what the right size is for whatever your medium is. So. Um, often I'll get people who post a, a welcome post in a course, and they'll attach a photo, and then they'll be like, oh, no, why is my photo so huge? And my eye is like five inches on the screen. <laughs> so um, it's a common problem. Selecting layers, cutting and pasting objects. Good. Yep, we'll show some of that today, too. OK, the next question is, um, if you want to type it just in the chat room, that's fine, too, is um, if you are currently using um, a, an image editing application, um, what are you using? Paint Shop Pro. <laughs> that is not even on my list for today, anyway. Photoshop Elements, good. Photoshop GIMP, OK, that's on my list today, and as are the Photoshops. And this office picture manager, OK? That one I don't know. OK, good. And then the lot PowerPoint, OK? And then uh, the last question, and if you could just, um, uh, if you could tell me if you're on a Mac or Windows normally, and then I just know which, because uh, I have both options to show you. And if there's no Mac users, then OK, good, both. Windows, Windows, um, 
both. OK, good. So that solves the problem. I will show both Mac and Windows. And then we can, um, you can see some options. And those, um, there's pretty good options on both, on both systems. So you don't have to feel left out if you're on only one system. Um, and so if you haven't already seen um, the previous visual thinking desktop seminars, there's a link. And um, Bill put the link also in the chat room earlier. Um, uh, so you can go and check out those archives. Um, and I thought Lynn Strand did a pretty good job of talking about um, how to make um, how to make things visually interesting, and how, you know why you want to would want to add some images into your course, maybe or into your syllabus, and how those could um, really kind of change the tone of your online course. So it's worth checking that out. And so today, what I'd like to do is um, go over some um, free and cheap options um, that work only on Windows, only on Mac, some cross-platform options that you can use on either. And for those, I'm going to talk mostly about Photoshop and the multiple kind of flavors of Photoshop that you get. And then some good online solutions, which um, which is a pretty interesting um, area. And I, I could have added also um, mobile solutions. And if we have time, I can talk about some um, iPad um, image editing apps that I, that I like um, and how to use those. But you know, one of the things, I teach a course called Digital Media Skills. And it's kind of a bear to, to keep this course up to date because it has a section on how do you use computers and saving file, what file format to use and all of that. And then it moves on to a graphic section. And in the graphic section, I have students download a 30-day trial of Photoshop so that they can try out Photoshop. And I am considering not having them do this, because it turns out that you know the only way to get the free trial is to use the most current version. And the most current version of Photoshop requires that you have at least a gigabyte of RAM. And so that puts about a bunch of home users out of the picture. And so anyway, I've been considering um, using some online solutions. And when I show them today, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some of the reasons that some of the things you can't do with an online solution that you can do with, a, with an actual application on your computer. So I'm going to start with um, Windows, which if you know me, you think, why is she starting with <laughs> I, I'm a Mac user. And so um, the Windows options that I wanted to talk about today, and I would love for you, we're a small enough group here today that um, I would encourage you to chime in about other apps that you use that you um, like to use, or if you think I'm misrepresenting any of any of the Windows apps, please feel free to interrupt. Um, MS Paint comes with your um, system already, so it's already something that's on your computer. Um, and, and so it has that benefit of, of being there um, ready for you to use. No install required. Um, it is quite limited in what what it gives you. Um, and so one of the things, one big distinguishing feature between all of these different applications is whether or not they can do layers. And so layers in images are, are very important to me because it allows you to build a complex image gradually over time. And so you can think of the layers as um, kind of transparencies that you put on top of the image. And um, so in paint, you can't do layers, um, which, which I find to be a, a problem. And it doesn't have a whole lot, it doesn't have any color correction. I'm going to turn on application sharing here so that you can see my desktop. And I'll, and I'll show you um, both MS Paint and what I think is a better alternative, um, which is this paint.net option, which is also a free application, but it's not already sitting on your computer. And so there. Are you seeing my desktop OK? Yes. Good. Thanks, Bill. And you should know that when I'm in app sharing here, it's a little harder for me to um, see the chat room. So um, I'm going to try to keep my eye on it as much as possible. But if it takes me a minute to recognize you have a question or a comment, please be patient. And so um, this picture that you're seeing here with this bright orange chrysanthemum is 
in MS Paint. So this is the free application that comes on your computer. And so if you let's say you have I think the most common task that most people do with images is they have an image that they've they've gotten from either the web or they've gotten it they've downloaded it from their digital camera and they imp and and they just say, "Oh, I'm going to take that file, whatever format it's in, and I'm going to post it into my online course or I want to add it onto a web page or I want to email that to my mother." And so um, when you go to do that, the first thing you might find is that um, the size of the image is totally wrong or that the format is not the best format. And so, um, so Paint, MS Paint, free on your PC, works great for solving those two major problems that you might have every day. And so if you um, have a photo that's open um, on your computer in MS Paint, you can go in and um, I'm clicking the resize button here. And it allows you to resize um, the picture that you have. So it's not going to crop it or change it in, any of, in that way at all. Um, and I'm going to put this to pixels so that I can see how big is this picture that I'm working with. So depending on the, the source of your original image, these, these numbers of your horizontal and vertical pixels can be quite different. Like you could download a little thumbnail, and it could be 32 pixels by 32 pixels, tiny, tiny little image. And you say, oh, I want to take this tiny image, and I want to put it up big on my web page. Well, it's going to look terrible because it has such a low resolution. And so you want to, um, ideally, you'd like to get pictures that are quite large, high quality, and be able to scale them down to make them a lower resolution so that you can email them or you can put them in your on your web page. And so if I were to leave this at this 1024 by 768, what's going to happen is if I were to take that and just put that into my into Moodle or Blackboard or something and do nothing else, it's going to just come and it's going to take over the whole screen. 1024 by 768 is a fairly large size image that's going to um, take over your whole page. The important thing is um, I've got this little maintain aspect ratio button checked. Um, what that means is if, if I don't have this button checked, I can go in and type any number I want in here. Um, and so that's going to skew the picture. If I want to maintain the proportion, so I don't want this flower to be short and fat, I want it to stay exactly as it is, um, you're going to probably want to keep the maintain aspect ratio button um, checked. And so when I go in and change one, let me change the horizontal dimension, you'll notice that the vertical proportion changed accordingly. I didn't have to figure out what number to put in there. Um, so that's a useful tool. And so there, I've changed this picture. I've changed its dimensions. And now not only is it going to be smaller when it shows up on a web page or an email, but it's also going to take up less bandwidth, as Doug said. So it's a smaller, it'll be a smaller file to physically have to wait for it to, to download. So that's important if you're working on the web. Not so important if you're going to be printing this image, but um, important for, for web work. Um, so you can't go in, and if I wanted to change the hue or the tone of this picture, I wouldn't be able to do that in MS Paint. Um, I can draw on the picture if I want. So if I um, if I want to go in here and make some kind of mark on this picture, I can. I think also big uh, common thing um, that I want to do with an image is I want to add text to an image. And so I can do that in, in MS Paint. Um, you can change the color of the text. Um, so you, have some, you do have some options um, about what you want, what you can do in here. Questions on, um, M on MS Paint. Anybody use this for, for basic image editing? Not really, yeah. It's pretty limited in what you can do. But if all you need to do is resize a picture, if, if you leave with nothing else today, I hope that you leave with the 
idea that if you don't have Photoshop, you don't need Photoshop to do a lot of basic ta common tasks that you'll do every day. So let me um, let me show you. This is Paint.net. Um, the picture here that's showing you this photo of a lighthouse. Um, this is Paint.net, and um, the key. Uh, it's free. It uses the um, the dot. It uses the dot net framework, and I have to tell you, I'm the wrong person to explain what that is. Maybe Doug, you can put that in the chat room. But um, so, if you download this, it's going to, and you don't already have the dot net framework installed on your Windows box, it's going to install that. And I think I think this is awesome. It's free. And it allows you um, to have layers. And so let me show you let me show you what a layer looks like. This is a layers palette here, and um, it's showing me that what I have open is um, the picture of the lighthouse, and that's in the background layer. Now let's say, like in the last picture with the flower, and I just drew on that. If I wanted to get rid of the drawing, it's hard to do that. But if I had it on its own layer, it's pretty easy to make changes. And so I'm going to go in and um, let's add some text to this picture. So I'm going to use the text tool. And this is that as I run, I'm going to get a whole like, here's how to use each one of these apps. But you should start noticing that the tools and the placement of the tools and the palettes, it's um, very similar, no, no matter um, which one, which application you use. So knowing a little bit about one of these applications makes it easier to um, use an, a different application. And so I'm going to, um, oops, I'm going to go in. Let's see. And um, I want to before I do this. Let, let me go in and um, make some adjustments to this image before. Um, before I add text or change it, because I want you to be able to see more clearly. Um, so one of the things you couldn't do in um, Paint was that you couldn't go in and really change the color of that image or change the hue. In, in um, Paint.net, you can. So I can go in and I can adjust um, the, the hue and the saturation of this. Um, so I can make the picture um, look a little different. Um, so it's very good. So let's say common use of this is that I go out with my iPhone and I take pictures. And I don't have a whole lot of control in my, um, in my iPhone about the quality settings on how great my photos are going to look or if the color is right. Um, so when I import those photos into my computer, I can then go in and make these kind of color adjustments after the fact and hopefully try to compensate for some lack of quality that I might, might have gotten when I took the photo. And so this is something that I do with almost every image is need to go in and try to figure out, oh, can I, can I make my picture look a little better um, if I just you know, try to lighten up the lighten up the um, colors in it. And now, of course, I'm doing this real time here. I'm not necessarily making it better. I just want, it, I want you to see sort of the scope of changes that you can make. So I can, if I want to make this really dark for some reason, I can go in and do that. Um, just like the other program, I can go in and um, paint right on top of my picture if I want. And I can go in and add a new layer. And you'll notice when I have this layer now, now I have a, I have a transparency that's sitting on top of the lighthouse image. And, and what's cool about that is um, I'm going to go in and just make a little bit bigger brush here so you can see a little better what I'm doing. And I can choose what color I would like. Um, I can use this color wheel over here in the lower left. Or I can choose a prefab color. I'll, cho I'll choose a, let's see, let's choose something you can see, a yellow. And so I can go in and I can draw on the sky here. And it's separate. It's a different layer than the lighthouse image. And so if I go back later and decide, oh, that was a bad idea, I don't want you to see 
that thing that I just drew, I can just turn off that layer. So this is true also in all of the Photoshop apps too that you can take um, is that you can use this nice layer feature. And you can do text in, in here so you can add um, you know add your text and you can change what the um, font is of your text and all of that. So you have all of the those same features that you would um, kind of expect with a with a program such as this. Um, and then let me show you um, another thing that will differentiate all of these programs that you'll kind of want to just look in and see and make sure that it can save a file in the file format that you want. So I'm going to go File and Save As. And I'll show you um, some options that this particular paint.net offers. Um, and they're pretty common. This, these will be fairly standard across. You can choose um, the, probably the most standard one that you'll, you'll end up choosing is a JPEG, um, which is great. You want to choose JPEG if you've got a photo, something that has a lot of color in it. Um, JPEG is really um, a good choice for that. Um, the other option um, that I use a fair amount is GIF. And um, it's an old, very old file format, but it has some features that um, you don't get in JPEG. And so I, use, when I, I do a ton of screenshots so that I need to capture something from my computer screen and be able to show that to my students in a step-by-step -step way. Um, GIF often is a much better um, format when you have text on the screen. So I want them to be able to read the words in a menu or something like that. Um, GIF does a better job at making those um, clear edges really show up. So that's why I would choose GIF um, sometimes for a um, screenshot. The other reason you can choose GIF is if you are so inclined, GIF is a file format that allows you to do um, animations. <laughs> and so if you see those little jumping, bouncing icons and you want to make one yourself, um, that's an animated GIF. And you can't animate a JPEG file. Um, PNG, the ping format, is a newer format. And it's, um, it's nice. It's a good format. It works on the web. So GIF, JPEG, and um, ping are your three formats that will work on the web, display in your web browser just fine. And um, ping is cool because it also um, allows you to have, um, it, it does, it does, it's kind of almost a combination of qualities of JPEG and GIF. So it handles text a little bit better than a JPEG would. And it um, also it allows transparency, which um, you can get a transparent area in a GIF. And let me see. I think I have a, um, uh, do I have an image right here that's transparent? I probably don't. Um, transparency is great. So if you have like a, um, if you have a, a background of your web page, and let's say your web, for your course, your website has um, kind of a, a tan background behind all of your text. If you want to put a picture that has that looks like it's just kind of floating on the tan, you can't in, in all of these paint painting applications, you have to make square edges. You have to have um, you have to have a canvas that is a certain size. And that's a square. You can't have a circular canvas. And so if you want a circular image, um, you have to use transparency. And so that would allow the background meaning whatever color your web page is to show through. And so you can get transparency with um, both the ping and the GIF format. So just you want to check before you spend a ton of time editing an image um, to make sure that it's going to save the file in a, in a format that you want. Um, so questions on? Those and some, somebody had a okay. Thank you for this .NET explanation. Um, and somebody was using paint, was it um, Paint Paint Shop Pro? Um, does Paint Shop Pro have any feature that either of these two that I showed don't have? Um, that would be interesting for me to know. Um, just as a as a choice, it has lots of features. 
um, I know I didn't show a lot of, I mean, paint.net can do an awful lot of things that I haven't showed either, but um, it's like Photoshop Lite. Yeah, I would call paint.net sort of Photoshop Lite a, a little bit. I don't know. I haven't tried, but I will try out PaintShop Pro, though. Good. So for Mac folks, um, there, there's two good free options that are on your Mac already, um, which is iPhoto. And the, if you're using a, um, if you're using um, iPhoto to store your photo, to store your images um, already, the newer versions of iPhoto have really good editing capabilities that the older versions of iPhoto don't have. So it's worth looking into, and I, and I will show iPhoto today. Um, and the same is true with Preview, which I think of, you know, for, for years, Preview has been this free app that comes on your Mac that you use to read PDFs. Like you can use a, you know, if you download a PDF, you don't need to get Acrobat. You can just open it in Preview. Um, Preview also has a lot of ed, ed, sort of simple editing tools built right in it nowadays. And so it's worth looking into that. Um, so I'm going to show um, I'm going to show iPhoto in the background here. I'm going to quit my um, parallels because it just is making everything crazy on my computer here. Um, and so I'm going to try to I'm running a I'm running parallels, which lets me run Windows on my Mac. And um, in theory, it's great, but um, it it's not <laughs> it's not always as easy as it should be. And it's terrible over confer here because it makes my um, it just seems to make my computer very slow. So I'm hopeful that now Windows has taken over my computer trying to think it's shutting down. I hope this is not going to. There. Oh, good. Excellent. I'm back. So let me show you. Um, and then so two other, two good options of, um, yeah, Preview is great for taking a screenshot. Um, two other good low cost options that, um, that I have tried and people are using are um, Acorn and Pixelmator. Um, you know, and so I don't know that um, I've used the trial versions of these. So you can download Acorn, and I think it's a 15-day trial, um, and then you have to activate it. And Pixelmator gives you a 30-day free trial. Um, you could try these out to see. Um, at that price range, I am not sure that it's um, I'm not sure it's worth it to, to spend 50 or $60 on one of those two applications, as opposed to some of the good free online tools, or um, instead of Photoshop um, Elements, which is, um, which is great and cheap for us as California Community College faculty members. Um, so let, let, me, let me show you iPhoto. Um, share my desktop here again. Okay, and so here's iPhoto, and um, what I have open is um, some images from my um, from my library. And so um, I use iPhoto to store all my images too. So not only do, do I use it as an image editor sometimes, but I also use it as a uh, an image organizer, so that I can keep um, keep stuff together. Um, and you can make these albums of content, and you can print books, and you can do all sorts of other things that I'm going to show you with iPhoto. But here's a, here's a key part of iPhoto. Um, if you go into your iPhoto preferences, um, in the advanced setting, you'll, you'll notice there's an Edit Photos option. And by default, it's set to in iPhoto. But you can go in, and now I've, I've, re, I've done this before, and so my menu is going to be different than yours. Um, yours will say in iPhoto, and it will show in another application. It'll give you a button to choose another application. And so what's cool about this is that I can store my photos in iPhoto and edit them in iPhoto, or I can edit them in any other image editing application that's already on my computer. And so um, I'm going to first show you, um, I'm going to leave it set to in iPhoto now, and I'll show you the iPhoto editor, and then I'll show you how it, how it will link to 
to any other app. And so when I have an image in iPhoto, I'm going to just click this Edit button at the bottom toolbar. And it'll bring up my picture. Ooh, that's pretty. OK. <laughs> there. So it'll bring up my picture of um, cupcakes in the, in the iPhoto image editor. And there's, a, there's some really nice, quick, easy solutions for um, doing things that are common, like fix red eye. Now, this is not a picture that would have a red eye issue. But it's a, that's a very common, um, it's a very common thing to need to change um, in a in a snapshot. And so there's a little button, and it will take, and it will look, and it'll find, oh, there's red eye. I'm going to fix it. It does it for you automatically. And so no, no, only um, iPhoto is only Mac. So we're moved from the PC apps to now we're going to do a few minutes on the Mac apps, and then we'll go cross platform again. And so um, you can do in any of the apps that I've showed you, you can rotate photos. Um, it has this kind of silly enhance option, which tries to just make the colors a little better, which is probably way too subtle for um, displaying across CCC confer here. Um, straighten, this is a cool one. And so I clicked straighten. And you can see this grid that appears on top of my image. And so I can change the angle of my image, keeping the straight edges, right? So I'm going to keep a canvas that's a, that's a rectangular canvas. It's just rotating the image within it. And so um, I, I really like that feature. Um, I can also crop an image. And I like this way of cropping a lot. And this is also similar to many, um, many apps that you'll see today, um, is that you can go in and um, keep it. Um, constrain the proportions. Or you can, um, in the iPhoto, you've got a whole different set of um, presets. If you want to use any of these particular presets to keep it in the right proportion, you can do that. Um, I'm going to keep it at its original proportion. And then I can just drag in and move this box around to crop this image any, any way I want. And so when I have a crop that I want, I can either click, I can just click Done, and it'll crop my image for me. There's some retouching. There's a bunch of effects in here. Um, and so this, these, some of these effects are new to this latest, uh, latest version of iPhoto. Um, but like I can just click it. Oh, there's my sepia-toned cupcakes. If I don't like it, I can click it off. Um, and so you can go in and try out any of these sort of preset filters. What's cool about these is that um, you can go in and like this edge blur I really like. And you'll see there's a little one that appears um, after I clicked edge blur. And I can click, I can keep clicking edge blur and this number keeps going up and it keeps adding that effect. So the more times I click that, you might notice that the edges of my photo are getting more and more out of focus. And so you can go in and you know, try any sorts of combinations of these effects that you want. Um, you can also get some pretty sophisticated um, uh, exposure controls, like you've got in paint. You can go in and um, adjust. You know, do you want it to be a super bright image? Do you want it to be darker? Um, you can adjust all of those. The tint, the color, all of that. So it's pretty nice. And when, you are, um, when you're done with your image, you can go in and you'll see that what iPhoto has done now is it's taken, um, it's taken my image. And it has it in my library now showing as the changed image. At any time, you can, still, you can always go back and revert to that, to that original image if you decided that, oh, I just made that picture way worse than it was to start with, which I do a lot. Then um, you, can, um, you can change it. You can export the photos out of um, iPhoto in a, in a gazillion different ways. Um, file formats also. I'm not going to have time to show that. Um, I do want to just show you um, 
how I can change my preference here. And I'll choose it. So now I want to edit photos in. Um, oops, is it asking me where? It's asking where is that application. And so I'll just have to go choose it again. Uh, Adobe Photoshop CS5. And so now it's linked to um, iPhoto is now linked to, instead of use the editor that I just showed you, um, I'll just choose a, let me just choose a different um, photo here. Um, how about this table? Um, uh, if I have this image and I and instead and if I click the edit button now, instead of opening in the iPhoto editor, it's going to go and open Photoshop, which is a little slow here. And it'll open up Photoshop, and then I can make changes in Photoshop, and it will allow you and it'll actually show you the adjustments in iPhoto once you've made the changes in Photoshop. So there. So there's my image opened in Photoshop. And then I can use all my Photoshop tools to make adjustments to it and still use iPhoto to store the, the changed copy so that then I can um, still use it as a, a photo managing application. OK, so I'm going to, in efforts of time here, not show preview, but just let you know that pre yeah, preview will do screenshots for you. So if you, you don't need to use something like Jing, if you're on a Mac, you can just use preview to take a screenshot. Um, and then let's see, Photoshop. So some of you, um, there were some Photoshop users earlier that said they used Photoshop, some people that used Elements. Um, anybody using? Um, Photoshop Express. Has anybody tried the online Photoshop? Let me just see. Um, does does the edit in another app make it automatically non-destructive? Um, you can't. It does. It it keeps a copy of it, so you'll actually um, have two copies of that photo um, in your library. Okay. So what I um, Photoshop Express. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to note about iPhoto um, that's a little weird is that you cannot add text to a photo using the iPhoto editor. So that, to me, that's a big drawback. Um, and so Photoshop Elements, I think the, the golden rule on this is to use what you have. And so um, some people, for some colleges, they have um, licenses to the Creative Suite, um, which is the whole Adobe suite of Photoshop, Dreamweaver, InDesign, uh, all of their stuff. Um, and so if that's what your college provides you, then you get a copy of full-on Photoshop CS. Um, you should use that. That's sort of the top of the line um, image editing application that you could, could use. Um, it is way more than most of us will ever need to do, um, but it certainly adds has some nice tools um, available to it. Photoshop Elements um, is sort of the Photoshop for the rest of us. And um, it has, um, a lot of people think of it as it's like the scaled back version of, of Photoshop CS, um, it, which is sort of true. There are features of um, this professional version in the Elements version. But there's also things in Photoshop Elements that you, can't, you couldn't do, in, or you could do, um, but you can't do right inside of Photoshop. And so it has a bunch of sort of scrapbook options, and you can you know, get these templated backgrounds. And you know, it has an automatic red eye reduction, which the professional version of, of Photoshop doesn't have. And so um, it, it does have some options that I think are useful for like you know commonplace graphics uses for the rest of us that you don't need to make a flyer that's going to be printed out on some super fancy printer and all this stuff like um, it's a pretty good option. Photoshop Express is um, somewhat new and it's a uh, it's the online version of Photoshop and it um, and I really like it. 
I, I will tell you that for me, the thing that I don't like about it, and I'm going to show it to you in a second here, um, the thing that I don't like about it um, is that I, I like, um, how do I explain this? So there's, you have your image, and your image sits on um, a canvas. You don't get to play with the canvas in any of these applications that I've shown so far. And you won't get to do that on, um, in, within Photoshop Express also. Um, and so for me, that's, that's its biggest drawback. You get layers. You get all sorts of other um, really great tools. Um, and I'm going to show you this now, even though I said that I was going to wait. I'm going to show it now. So let me turn on my, I've lost my confer window here. Let me turn on application sharing again. And this, I'm going to move this, otherwise I'm never going to get back. And so this is, um, I've opened up, um, I went to Photoshop.com and I got to their uh, in my web browser. So this is not an application. I've downloaded nothing. This exists on the web. And um, this has um, gives me the option of using my online library so you can store your photos in their online services. Um, I can upload a photo from my computer right now if I wanted to do that. Um, or I can just go and work. I'm going to just choose one of their sample photos for the sake of time. Um, and so um, you can see their tools here. Um, and let me move this, move this a little smaller so that you can see a little bit more of the tools. Um, but they have all of the tools that you might expect from a, a sort of scaled back version of Photoshop. The interface is much different than Photoshop. And so this is the reason that I haven't just switched to it for my own classes, is because I'm really trying to teach students um, some basic file management skills um, and windows and all that stuff and how to use applications before they actually go in and start making creative work. And so for me, the fact that the interface is so drastically different from Photoshop online to from that to the actual application, for me, that's a, that's a deal breaker. Um, but you can do a lot of things in here. I can change the exposure, um, and it'll, you know, it'll show you a preview. Again, this is doing this all online. Um, I'm not doing this on my computer. So this is eating up bandwidth by doing this. But it's pretty fantastic. Um, you know, it has these touch-up tools. It has some of the same tools that you would see in Photoshop itself, but it doesn't. It won't let you add canvas to this image. It won't let you. Um, it'll let you resize it, but um, you know, I can crop and rotate. So um, it has that also that same nice straighten feature where it'll adjust the image and put it at an angle if that's what I want. And it lets you save the files. And so this was this is also key, right? Like, how, how can I save the file? And so I can take the um, file, even though it only ever existed online, I can take it and I can save it and save it on my desktop. And um, so it's a, it's a pretty nice way to um, to edit online apps if you're like looking for something for your students to be able to to quickly um, get a feel for Photoshop, you can do that. I am running very long here, so I'm going to try to um, show a couple of things here in um, Photoshop, even though nobody really um, is asking questions about these things. But if you have specific questions about specific techniques, because I, I would I can show you some things, but I haven't shown you finding images, and I haven't showed you anything about selection. Let me show you quickly about selection. Um, and so, so for me, in, in most um, challenges, this, what you're seeing now, this is Photoshop CS. So this is the full version of Photoshop um, that I'm showing you. And um, it has its toolbar and all of the, you know, it's got hidden tools under other tools, full-featured, um, hard to use. 
um, not a you know very steep learning curve. You'll probably only ever use you know thirty percent of what's possible in this application. Um, but I can go in and it has I can adjust the um, you know these should start looking familiar. I'm trying to show you similar things in each application. Um, you can adjust the levels of the image. Um, one thing that Photoshop has that I love, as do some of the other um, tools, um, it has this nice clone tool. So um, the clone tool allows you to take, um, if I wanted to get rid of this spoon, for example, I can clone the tablecloth and see if I can get rid of the spoon. And I'm going to just do a very quick bad job. But you can see that. Um, as with audio and video editing, this can expand to fit the time allocated. So, so uh, give yourself some time to to work with these, um, work with the images if you're going to start changing them. You know, and often, like you know, you might not want to remove the spoon from the table. But a very common thing that I have had to do is somebody has pictures from around the campus and. There's graffiti on the side of the building, right? And so I can go in and Photoshop and get rid of the graffiti that's on the side of the building. Or there's a big no parking sign that's kind of wrecking the mojo on the beautiful picture. And so I can try to go in and edit out the, the sign that, that is distracting. Um, and so the, the, um, so with selections, um, selection is um, crucial to, to working with images. And in Photoshop, you've got a ton of choices. Um, you can use, and I'm not sure, do these marquees show up over Confer? Are you seeing the little window here that I've yeah. got selected? Yes. OK, excellent. Um, and so you can use the, you know, make a rectangle. You can do a, um, an ellipse. You can do, um, and any of these tools, if you hold down um, the Option key, you can go um, from the center out, which is sometimes helpful. Um, and if you hold down the Option and the Shift, you can constrain yourself to um, perfect circles or perfect squares instead of ellipses and elliptical circles and all that. Um, Photoshop is um, available on both Mac and Windows. So um, you can get the, the version that, you, that works for you. Um, the, so those are basic selection tools. Um, I want to just point out that in the menus, um, you, you get a ton of options here. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I do often is um, I make a selection and then select the inverse of it. Um, because sometimes it's easier to select the thing that you don't want and then select inverse than it is to try to use one of the other selection tools to, um, to select the, just the part that you want. Sorry, that was not very clear. Um, but sometimes just you know, select the opposite of what you think, and then use the inverse. Um, so there's a bunch of tools. The magnetic lasso is kind of a cool tool um, that you can use. And you can so, um, click on your image. And I don't think this is going to come across clearly. But it tries to hug the edges of pixel changes. And so um, I don't have to be very precise about my dragging this around the table. And it's going to try to follow the table edge um, and making a selection here. And I'm going to just close it, even though it's not making a right selection. But it, made, it did a pretty good job of selecting the edge. Um, the other thing that's nice to know about selections in Photoshop is that you can um, Modify the edges of your selection, um, and there's a <laughs> there's a whole there's now a whole million different ways to to do that. But this is showing me what I have the area that I selected, which was part of the chair and the side of the table. And you can go in and try to um, adjust the edges so that um, if I'm going to turn smoothing way up here, so it kind of makes it a little softer which can be, instead of if it's all the way down, it looks like somebody took a pair of scissors and just hacked it away. And so um, you can play around with a lot of these um, feathering and just different ways of smoothing images, which 
um, works really well if you're trying to make a collage where you're putting sections from one image together with sections from another image. Um, you know, the telltale sign is, does it look like somebody just did it with a pair of scissors? And so, um, a, a couple of people wanted to see you use the pen tool to select uh, something. Um, meaning this pen over here? I assume it's um, referred to it as the pen tool. Yeah, so the pen tool, uh, not how I ever make a selection, but I will try here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the pen tool is one of these um, tools that is, uh, I, I think of more as from the illustrator side of the house, where the pen, um, I don't, can you even, I don't think you can see, can you see this pen tool yeah. making the curve? I can. There's, you can, oh good, great. So it makes these curves, and so you, can, you make points along, you manually go in and make points, along the area, um, and it draws lines between them, but then you can change it so that it's curved, and so you can make these um, selections like this. Um, I, I don't use those, use it, so um, I'm, I'm not the one to, to tell you much about it. Um, I'm going to stop this sharing for a second here, and Let me just see what else we get here because we're running out of time. So other options for online things that, um, that I use, that I like, um, is Jing, which a lot of people use for um, just to, to make movies, and they make these little screencasts with them. You can also use it to take still images. Um, in addition to just the still image part of it, though, um, it also lets you add in annotations, and so you can. It's great for if you want to add like a little thought bubble or something on top of your image. Um, it's a there's a it's a very quick way to do that. Um, Picnic, I also found these are all free. Um, Picnic was also um, a nice little online editing suite. Uh, doesn't quite have the same options that um, the Photoshop online suite has, but um, really useful. Um, Aviary, I really like because um, it's an online tool. It allows you to use, um, uh, you can have layers in your image. And it's, it's extra cool because it allows you to import your um, Photoshop document. So it'll take a .psd file, and it'll open it up, and it'll, sh and it'll preserve all your layers. And so you can continue editing, um, editing online if you want. And so um, I, I like it. They also, by the way, have fantastic, um, they have a fantastic audio editing application that is also online. So um, I would say they are one to watch. Um, and um, the Pixel has also um, allows for layers. And so um, for that alone, I think it's a, um, it, they're worth checking out and they're free. And so I like the free online solutions more for having your students do that kind of work than I would do for myself. For me, I, I still prefer um, old school, like give me the application, let me have the file on my computer. Some of these online services um, make you upload the photo to them first. And so um, like Picasa does that, so you have to upload your, put your photo in Picasa, and then you can edit it in the Picasa editor, um, which is also a good editor too. And if you're already using Picasa to store your photos, it's an awesome, it's an awesome option. So um, I'm going to stop here because we are at 12:58, and um, take some questions and and find out if there's um, one. Oh, you wanted to know about finding images. So let me know if I should do that or if we should talk about something else. Okay, let me let me um in while you guys are thinking of questions, I'm gonna go to finding images here. Okay, so if there are no other questions then um, I'm going to uh, let you know, let me just tell you a quick story. I um, had to do a reader for my course, um, for the people that teach my online course in the classroom. And in my classroom,
um, in my own course, I had gone through and used, um, I went into Creative Commons, which is w what I use to find, to find images. And, um, and in Creative Commons, um, let me just get to the right, um, to the right place here. Um, and then I'm going to turn on app sharing again so you can follow me here. So I go to um, Creative Commons, and I'm just doing stuff to put images into my course. And I, um, I've gone into Creative Commons, and I'm searching for images. And their image search is through Flickr. And um, one of the um, one of the things that I did was I was just using them for my online course. And so I went in and I wanted to get the maximum number of photos that I could find. And so I unchecked use for commercial properties uh, purposes, and I un and I left checked modify adapt or build upon because I knew that I would probably be changing the images once I found them. And so I went through for my whole course, and I looked for images. And so let's say I was looking for um, uh, windows. Um, and so I did a search for, um, for windows to see what I would get. And in my case, I actually was looking for like not Microsoft Windows, but actual windows. And so I found all these photos. And um, when you when you click on a photo to to see the um, actual image itself, you can go in and um, see what kind of um, rights are available to you. And so because I said I I didn't it's a, I'm losing my mind here. When I was at the beginning, I had unchecked the box that said, I'm, I'm not going to use this commercially. So um, I got all of these photos. So some of these photos that I found were available to be used commercially, and some of them weren't. And I didn't think it mattered, because I had, was just using them in my course, and I wasn't using them commercially. Well, now, the in-class the classroom version of my course is using my online materials as a reader for the on-campus students. And what are they doing? They're selling the reader to the students because the reader, because it costs them money to print the to print the whole thing out on paper, right? And so they're selling the reader. So I had to go through and refine all of my images <laughs> to make sure that they actually had um, they had rights to be sold or not. And so the lesson I learned from this is that you should always, um, when you're looking, if you, have any, if you have any thought that you might use something for a commercial purpose, you want to keep that checkbox checked <laughs> so that you don't have to go through the whole process twice. And so I'm going to, um, so here's the image. and. Um, It'll tell you about the license, and so you can go and find out exactly um, what, how you can and can't use the image, how the person wants to be credited. Um, and so uh, this can be a slow process of finding pictures. But, um, and I try to do it in a bulk process so that I like, have a whole list of, of images that I'm looking for. And the way that I have Flickr help me when I'm finding the but I look at the tags. And so when I find a, a photo, when I'm looking at the thumbnails of a whole bunch of photos, I look at the tags to see how it was tagged. And then I start refining my search a little bit more. So that if this was tagged with, you know, if I like this, but I don't want a wooden window, I want a metal window, I might go back and refine my search and, and do a metal window, right? And so as I get the, um, as I get more information, I start refining my search. Oops, I didn't find it at all. And so this will, you know, this will take over your life. <laughs> there. And so this maybe was more what I was looking for, was a big industrial building. And maybe it wasn't really just the window I was looking for. I was looking for a whole bank of windows. And so you can, um, you can let this expand to fit however long you have to offer it. So that's where I find images. 
if you have other suggestions, you can feel free to add them to the chat room. And so, yeah, sometimes it's better to just take your own photos. Like, it frankly can be faster to just spend the afternoon going out looking for the things that you need, shooting them, and then you know you have the rights to use them also. All right. So there's some good options, um, and it's anywhere from free to you know $600 options. Um, but not everybody needs Photoshop. People use Photoshop as a verb now, like I've just Photoshopped something, and they may or may not have actually used Photoshop. They just mean they've used an image editor to, to alter the image. And so if all you're looking to do is resize something, then you know MS Paint is, is totally adequate for that, and the iPhoto on the Mac would be totally adequate. Um, Illustrator to Photoshop. Illustrator works in vectors. Um, and it's more, much more um, of a drawing application than Photoshop. Think of, um, you can draw in both in Illustrator or Photoshop. Um, Photoshop really works better with rasterized um, images um, as opposed to somebody who's drawing an illustration. Right? They're making a, a logo that they want to be able to scale up to the size of a billboard, or they want to be able to use it as a button on their web page. My dad uses Illustrator, <laughs> but he, he, because he can draw. I can't draw, so I use Photoshop. 